Exercise is good for your body, mind, and spirit. So is spending time in the great outdoors. On this episode, we'll explore a few ways to get outside and get healthy. Coming up on Georgia Outdoors. Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible by a grant from Mary Hall Singleton and by the Imlay Foundation. From hiking and biking to canoeing and swimming, there are many ways to get your exercise outside. Research suggests that even low impact activity in the outdoors stimulates endorphins and contributes to both mental and physical health. Across Georgia, there are thousands of acres of land open for you to explore. Georgia's parks, national forests, wildlife refuges, lakes, and other public lands are great places for wildlife viewing, hiking, hunting, fishing, and general enjoyment. For the more adventurous, Georgia State Parks host an annual series of events to help you get in shape. The Try the Parks Triathlon Series is a challenging, competitive, and fun way to get out and enjoy the great outdoors. Welcome athletes and spectators to the Try the Parks Triathlon Race Series here at High Falls State Park. This race is the final race of the six race Try the Parks Series. Well, we looked at uh, a lot of places and we felt the state parks were a good fit. They're generally located near a lake um, and they give you a good off-road type setting where you're not in a congested area. Just a good way to introduce the athletes to the parks that are in Georgia. We found as we started the series, most people didn't know there were any state parks. It's just been kind of a good way to get people introduced to the parks and, uh, and get the folks to come out. High Falls State Park is located near Jackson, Georgia and is well known for its scenic hiking trails and waterfalls. High Falls State Park is a great place to come visit. The uniqueness is that we're in the Piedmont area, and the Piedmont area is a nice blend of different topography. We have the highest waterfall in the Piedmont area, 121 foot elevation drop. The High Falls Triathlon attracts about 500 participants a year, and it's a classic sprint triathlon featuring swimming, biking, and running. Hey, folks, if I get your attention, we're going to go ahead and go through the uh, pre-race announcements. In order for the race to run smoothly, athletes use a designated transition area to set up the gear they'll need later in the race, including bikes, towels, socks, and shoes. First shot at a triathlon, trying to find something to keep me motivated to exercise. So we're trying something, uh, trying something new. My friends teaching me how to set up my stuff, get everything prepped, get everything ready to roll. Once the gear is set, the racers head over to the lake to begin. And five, four, three, two, one, start. Today's race, uh, it's a 600 meter swim. All of our swims are 600 meters. With so many people competing in the event, it can be difficult to keep track of athletes. To help race officials observe competitors, each swimmer is placed in a group known as a swim wave. Uh, swim wave number, wave number two is all males 30 to 39, that's all yellow caps. It's always real important to us uh, just to have a good swim start, keep accountability for everybody so we can track the swimmers in and out of the water. And we generally have about five to eight swim waves. Uh, each wave wears their own color swim cap, it helps us uh, monitor them and then all the lifeguards on, on course can keep track of the swimmers. Even though it's only the first leg of the race, the swim can be strenuous. Well, I, I used to do just running and biking, and then um, it was getting a little bit boring, so a friend of mine talked to me about doing triathlons, and I started doing them last year. And the swimming's been the, the hardest part because I haven't swum in, uh, I don't know, since I was in college, actually, was the last time. After the swim, contestants move to the transition area so they can prepare for the bike ride. They come up from the lake and go into the transition area. They've got their bike and all their gear set up. They come in as fast as they can, take their swim goggles off, put their bike uh, gear on, and head out for the bike ride. For some athletes, the transition areas provide a much needed, although brief, break. 
Uh, having a great time so far. Waiting on my son who's swimming right now, so I'm thinking he'll probably be up here in about five minutes. Once athletes have swapped their swim caps for shoes, they can leave the transition area and begin the bike ride. This course, the bike ride left the park, all the courses leave the park. Way to go, way to go. Uh, we did a 14.2 mile loop essentially uh, down to High Falls Road, up to Highway 36 and back in High Falls Park Road. The ride through the park can be an exhilarating experience. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I don't think I would ever come out to, or even know that this was here and that's where the race is. And I've actually been back to a couple of parks after that. So it's kind of nice to come and see different parts of Georgia. I'm 69. You exercise a lot, it keeps you off of uh, blood thinners and cholesterol medicines and all that other stuff. So even though I'm uh, getting up in years, I still got slow heartbeat, good health. Nothing beats a day out in the park. Been doing triathlons for about uh, 18 years now and just out here getting a tune up before I go to world championships in about two weeks over in Hamburg, Germany. Congratulations guys on your good bike. Once the bike loop has been completed, athletes return for their last transition before the run. After a quick drink of water, the athletes make their final sprint toward the finish line. Nicely done. Keep it uh, it's a 5K run. It's a pretty flat course here at High Falls State Park, except for the finish. We've got a good hill coming back up here, uh, but it's an out and back course. So they go out about a mile and a half and a mile and a half back in. For many athletes, the run presents the greatest challenge. For me, it's always the run. <laughs> it's just hot. And in the middle of the run, you always say, why am I doing this? But at the end of it, you always say, you know, you'll do it again. Come on, come on, guys. Go, 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 go. When racers cross the finish line, volunteers are waiting with water in hand. The racers aren't the only ones that are putting in hard work for the race. Volunteers are just as crucial to the triathlon as the athletes themselves. There's probably about 60 to 80 people that are out here putting on a race. Everybody from lifeguards to the law enforcement uh, vehicles out on the course. Uh, to the volunteers that marking the course, letting athletes know which way to go, handing out water. After a quick cool down, it's time to check the results. We use an electronic chip timing system to provide live results throughout the race for all the athletes. The goal is to give them instant results as soon as they finish. It's the same system used in the Tour de France and the Olympic Games, so it's a quality, accurate system. Always anxious to see them, and you know, that's what they're here for. They're coming out, putting in a great effort, competing against each other, and they want to see how they did. So the idea is give them those instant results. It's been a demanding day for these athletes, and it's finally time for the award ceremony. And in first place, one hour, 10 minutes, Christine Kester. Of course, awards aren't the only reason people come out to race. The gym just bores me. <laughs> It's just, uh, you know, um, fresh air, different scenery, keeps things interesting, um, you know, it just keeps me motivated to keep doing it. Last year I did the Try the Parks and I went to three state parks that I've never been to, I never would have gone to otherwise. And also I like the challenge of it because you, know, you really have to push yourself to, to get through the three events, so I, I just, I like the challenge. Enjoying the health benefits of being outdoors doesn't necessarily mean hard exercise. Even a more low-impact activity like fishing, wildlife viewing, or hunting gets you outside to reap the benefits of fresh air, sunshine, and the camaraderie of sport. Every summer, Unicoi State Park near Helen hosts Outdoor Activity Day, an event that allows young and old to get out and experience all sorts of outdoor activities firsthand. This is an event on National Hunting and Fishing Day that we use to celebrate uh, fishing and hunting and other outdoor sports and give people a chance to try something maybe they've never tried before. Okay. Okay, go. It is a combination of a lot of different outdoor recreational type activities including skeet shooting, fly tying, fly fishing. Uh, we have canoeing and wildlife shows and hay rides. Unicoi is just a perfect spot because we can do everything right here in one place. One of the most popular attractions on Outdoor Activity Day is trout fishing. From tie flying to casting to hooking a trout, participants get the full experience. 
We've got some guys over there teaching them how to tie flies. A lot of kids really enjoy doing the little hands-on things, you know, and there's some real little simple flies that they can tie. Take it and lay it right on top of that hook. And we're gonna wrap around, come around again. Little simple around. flies catch as many trout as the real, you know, fancy, sophisticated ones. So. That's perfect. Excellent job. All right, now see if you can do it. Main difference in fly fishing and uh, spin fishing, though, you have the fly line, which uh, casts the fly when the fly will be real, almost have no weight to it. And so the fly line pulls the fly out as you cast it. Of course, nothing beats actually getting out on the creek and hooking a fish or two. The great thing about this event is that it's held on National Hunting and Fishing Day and what that means is you don't have to have a fishing license and you can come out and actually fish on the creek. We get a lot of kids at these events that, that have either only been fishing once or twice or never and uh, you know, this is the time to catch that first fish so you hear a lot of yelling and screaming and uh, a lot of smiles on their faces. Outdoor Activity Day also gives people an opportunity to get a closer look at some of our native wildlife species with live animal shows. See those pointed, long pointed wings built for yeah. speed. Other animals are on display too. Throughout the day, expert hunting dog trainers are on hand to show off their best students. Well, the hunting dog program, um, retrievers and pointers, is so kids can see the difference and see what a hunting dog does. Back. I've always had a passion for, for bird dogs. I thought we'd bring the puppy out and the retriever to begin with. Um, puppies are great kid magnets and the retriever, it, it's more of a uh, set visual hook. Um, having them go out and, and bring back two duck and do a blind retrieve. Visitors can experience other areas of hunting as well. From BB guns to shotguns, those who dare are given the chance to experience the thrill of shooting a target in a safe and controlled environment. We do the skeet shooting as an opportunity for people to, have to do something they've probably never had an opportunity to do before, and that's shoot at a moving target with a shotgun. Uh, we have some throwers throw the clay birds and you line up with a shotgun and get a chance to see if you can break a clay bird. We do some uh, BB gun air rifle or anybody wants to try that. Also right up beyond that we do the archery with the traditional bow hunters of Georgia as a group that comes out and does that every year with us. We're showing them the basics on shooting a traditional bow and the correct form and really how easy it is to shoot a bow. One finger over two under. What we basically do is show them how to hold a bow with a uh, split finger style, two fingers under one above, it's called a Mediterranean style. Show them how to hold a bow without it hitting the arms, the correct form, and basically just how to enjoy archery. Mm. That was a good shot. Finally, activity day attendants get the chance to paddle a canoe on Unicoi's 53-acre lake. We have canoeing. Um, the idea of the canoeing venue there is that you basically show up, we give you canoeing 101, this is a J-stroke, this is a backstroke, we give you some safety tips on how to not fall over in your canoe, and, um, and then we let you go out and paddle around. Canoeing and kayaking are good ways to get exercise, but perhaps the most popular and easiest way to begin getting fit outside is hiking and Georgia has hundreds of miles of hiking trails to tackle. If you're near Atlanta, Panola Mountain State Park is a great place to start. Panola Mountain is one of the closest parks to Metro Atlanta, and for years we've kind of been considered a, a hidden treasure, and I think lately we, people have been finding us a bit more. From guided mountain hikes to the paved multi-use trail, Panola Mountain State Park offers lots of opportunity to stretch your legs on the trail. In the summer, the park even offers a special guided twilight hike. Well, the twilight hike is a, is a ranger-led hike, and we take folks um, out on the multi-use path, and from there we kind of take a little side shoot off that trail and take them through what we call our power of flight area. And that's an area we've been restoring for several years. 
to get it back to its native nice. vegetation. Uh... That's actually uh, part of the wetland out there. You can see where the vegetation sort of changes. There's tons of wildlife out there. It's one of the best spots in the park to look at wildlife. Does anyone know what dragonflies eat? Bugs. Huh? Bugs, yeah, other bugs, little mosquitoes. During our twilight hike, we walk at different paces. The good thing about hiking outdoors is you're going to run into different situations. You're going to have hills that you have to climb up. Your heart rate's going to change and fluctuate. You're going to have easy areas to sort of recuperate from, and then you're going to have more challenging areas that you have to possibly go uphill. If you're looking for something a little more off the beaten path, you may want to get off the ground with tree climbing. And Panola State Park offers a good introduction to this growing pastime. This tree climbing experience is very different from what you remember from days in your backyard. Today is just a open climb or introductory climb and that's where we're going to have the general public come in we're going to get them in the proper gear, harness, helmet, and they're going to be hooked on rope, and they're going to access the canopy of the tree just down for rope. an experience. What's this called? Climbing knot, down rope, foot loop, climbing. You're on rope, you're on a very safe climbing system. If they let go, it pauses them where they are so there's no fall effect, and, uh, and you don't have to worry about your mother saying get it out of that tree. Okay, now do it by yourself. Stand up, slide up. Sit down, relax, and take your time. Take a break. Now slide up your foot It loose. feels cool because you're just kind of hanging loose from a tree. And you don't have to worry about falling. It feels really safe. And I don't know. It's just really nice. It's, it's cool. Basically, you just, I'm just resting here. Just put my foot underneath me. Pull up my knot. Slide up my hands. Step up, slide my knot, and relax. Pretty easy. <laughs> From swinging between the branches to just hanging out, there are lots of different techniques and tricks to try once you're up in the tree. Last week, my I went with my cousin, and they flipped him upside down, so he went up, down upside down, so I had to. So it was scary at first, but it was fun. It's a real good workout. Just work your leg muscles and arm muscles, so. Well, you're using your whole body, so this is an aerobic exercise. And you're outside enjoying what all these beautiful things that Georgia has been blessed with. If you're not up for climbing a tree, there are plenty of other healthy challenges in state parks. You might want to try the Canyon Climbers Club. For a small fee, participants are given a card and receive a hole punch after hiking each of the four canyons on the list, Tallulah Gorge, Amicalola Falls, Cloudland Canyon and Providence Canyon. The Georgia Outdoors crew, producers Brandon Arnold, Andrew Marshall, and Lauren Baker decided to take the challenge. The first canyon to tackle is Tallulah Gorge, a 1,000 foot deep canyon in northeast Georgia that's one of the most spectacular sites in the state. Each of the four parks have uh, X amount of stairs. We have 310 at a 45 degree descent down to our suspension bridge. A lot of people will go down and walk across the bridge and go up the other side, and there's even more stairs on the other side. It's 340 over there. Today, Tallulah Falls State Park attracts thousands of visitors a year to gaze across the canyon from the rim and to explore the canyon deeper via the stairs. On this cool fall day, our crew definitely broke a sweat climbing down to the suspension bridge. Tallulah Gorge is one of my favorite places in Georgia. It's just beautiful. It's a, it's a great place to visit. It's an amazing geologic formation. I really like Tallulah Gorge. Um, has some great scenic overlooks, and it's not too strenuous, and it's just a really beautiful place. The waterfalls at Tallulah Gorge are just beautiful, and I really like the swinging bridge as well. The hard part. After completing the canyon stairs and getting their cards punched, it was on to Amicalola Falls for the Georgia Outdoors crew. Though not a canyon, climbing the 604 steps to the top of the falls, the tallest cascading waterfall east of the Mississippi, provided quite a workout. As they climb up the steps, they're going to follow the base of the falls, um, basically all the way up to the first platform, and then the, the top of the falls will become visible. 
With a name derived from a Cherokee word meaning tumbling waters, Amicalola Falls is an impressive sight indeed. Amicalola is different because it's not a canyon, it's, it's, a, it's a waterfall, but uh, it's, it's no less strenuous. Amicalola is probably one of the more strenuous canyons because of all the stairs, and it was really pretty though. Amicalola Falls I really like because it's the entry point to the Appalachian Trail. So in addition to having a wonderful waterfall and trails that you can walk, you can see backpackers starting off on this great journey there, and it's just got a lot of history to it too. After climbing Amicalola and Tallulah Gorge, the outdoors crew had two more canyons to tackle. Cutting into the 200-foot high plateau of Lookout Mountain, Cloudland Canyon is one of Georgia's most spectacular views. Cloudland Canyon, you start at the top, walk down towards going down into the canyon. At the top, you'll have views of Lookout Valley, views of the shale layers, the sandstone layers. You'll see a lot of the younger rock, which is the sandstone. As you go down, you'll go through different layers of sandstone. You go through layers of shale, which has a lot of vegetation. As you get closer to the bottom, the rocks will get darker from being there for so long. The geology of Cloudland Canyon dates back to the Mississippian and Paleozoic era. Back in that time, this part of the world was ocean. This was around the shoreline. Quite a hike. After getting their cards punched at Cloudland, there was one more canyon for the Georgia Outdoors crew to climb. Providence Canyon is the only one of the four state park canyons located in South Georgia. Providence Canyon State Park is an awesome place. We have 16 canyons in all. There are 43 different colors of sands on the canyon walls. There's a three mile trail that circles nine of the canyons. You can actually go off the trail and into the canyons themselves. It's also the only one created not by geologic forces, but by poor farming practices. The pioneers moved to this area in the 1820s, and the topography at that time was rolling hills, where they stripped all the natural vegetation and farmed cotton here. Thing is, they plowed downhill, and the soil here is very sandy. The canyon started forming in like 20 or 30 years. Once you reach the canyon bottom, you're treated to a spectacular array of color along the canyon walls. This unusual look has earned Providence the nickname, the Little Grand Canyon of Georgia. Providence Canyon is really neat. It's different because of the way it formed from the poor farming practices. It's got these multi-layered sand formations and it's just amazing beauty. You feel like you're in the, the great out west because you see these great walls of, of red dirt and white clay. With Providence completed, the crew finished the Georgia State Parks Canyon Climbers Challenge and received their shirts but more importantly, they saw some incredible sights and got a good workout in the process. Sometimes you need a challenge to get you outdoors, and if you're one of those people, you might want to try geocaching. All you need is a GPS unit and a spirit of adventure. This group is gathering to participate in the annual Georgia Geocachers Association Challenge. But what is geocaching? It's uh, described as a high-tech treasure hunt or a high-tech scavenger hunt. You use handheld GPS's to find boxes of trinkets and what have you in the woods. The Georgia Geocachers Association formed in 2001 and is the first geocaching organization of its kind in the world. This event, taking place at the Dossett Trails Nature Center, brings out geocaching enthusiasts from across the state. We have 28 caches hidden out here in the woods for people to go find. And those caches are envelopes with poker cards in them. After three hours, we give them the coordinates. After three hours, they go find them, they come back here, and we play a poker game with those cards that they found. The main thing is to get together, have fun. We're gonna have food and camaraderie. We just enjoy each other's company as well. After a few announcements, the groups receive coordinates of different geocaches hidden on the property. The event brings participants from all skill levels. The Tarbush family is new to the sport, so we tagged along with them to see how they do. He got into it first. Everybody in the family kind of got pulled into it from there. Including me. <laughs> yep, the numbers are going down. Gives you a good excuse to walk in the woods. I love, I love to walk in the woods. That's the best part about it. I, doing that with, with Daddy, we've discovered places that I had no idea 
sometimes just a few miles from where I live. So how far away are we? 127 feet. Sorry. This cache has a special surprise waiting for the family. Snake rub all around it. There was one that was disguised as a stump um, under bridges. The event ends with an award ceremony. For kids, it's kind of the fun of finding buried treasure. For adults, it's the journey more than the find. It's going out in the woods, finding stuff. You know, for some people, it's exercise, uh, companionship. Whether you're out exploring the trails, hunting or fishing, climbing a tree, or even pushing yourself to the limit, there are plenty of ways to get exercise in the outdoors in Georgia. So get out there and break a sweat while getting healthy, no matter where you are. Air pollution is a growing concern everywhere, and car exhaust is one of the leading culprits. Do your part to help cut down on carbon emissions by trying some of these commute alternatives. Share a ride. Carpooling will save you gas, time, and money. Biking and walking are good alternatives for someone who lives close to work. Get in shape while doing your part to improve air quality. A fast and inexpensive way to commute to work is to use a transit system. Teleworking offers more benefits than the absence of a daily commute. It can reduce stress, increase productivity, and save you time and money. For more information on commute alternatives, visit the Clean Air Campaign at their website. Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible by a grant from Mary Hall Singleton and by the Imlay Foundation.